Um, we're going to see a, a very, very good friend of mine. She's considered like my sister. Um, she's Australian and she became a Muslim not long after me. My name's Fatima Harris. Um, I'm Australian. I'm married to, his name is Hajj Samir. He's Lebanese. We have two small children, Zainab al Hawra and Rukaya. Zainab's just turned four and Rukaya is two and a half. We just uh, park, gonna park outside her house now. So yes, you'll be able to speak to her and find out the reason why she's become Muslim and ask her questions. Fantastic Muslim today. I was Church of England, which is Christian, Christianity of some sort. I never really learned. I grew up, my mum would read us like a Bible story, um, just basic things, but my mother's not a religious person. And so it wasn't, we weren't, no, you can't do this. No, you must do this. You know, all those kind of things weren't in my household. We were brought up to be, you choose your, your path in life, and whatever you choose is okay. Do you know what I mean? Nothing, we were never stopped from anything. Now we're going to go see her. Her name is uh, Fatima, and it used to be Tiffany. Um, I think she became Muslim maybe a month or two months after me. I'm not quite sure. Um, but the funny thing about her was when she was Christian, she wore the scarf. So when I was taking her to places to learn about Islam, they asked her, are you Muslim? And she said, no, I'm not. Then why are you wearing the scarf? But she had it in her heart um, and she wore it properly too. So. Um, she just loved the hijab more than the Quran at first or something, but she just loved it. So you can ask all those questions. It's <laughs> I had a lot of friends around me who would be like, oh, I can't do that, that's haram. And I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, I, I really can't do it. It's a sin. I can't do it. My, you know, I'll be punished by God, you know, like by not drinking alcohol. They don't do this, they don't do that. And I'm like, wow, like... I've never done anything in my life and said I can't do that because it's haram or because it's against my religion. So um, it interests me a lot and it made me go back into my own religion and think um, and ask questions. Some of my friends uh, lived near so she spoke to them and then um, they it said, oh, you know, we know a girl, she's become Muslim and maybe you might feel comfortable. And so we, go and we were introduced and straight away we bonded. So, yeah, um, but she'll probably know the story better than me because <laughs> it's her story. So After that, I met, um, I still hadn't reverted yet, but I... Um, I, like I said, I started learning a lot more and then I met Sister Fatima and she took me to meet a few people, a few learned people that spoke to me and taught me quite a few things and um, she also took me to that Imam Hussain Islamic Centre. Oh, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, this is her husband, Samad. <laughs> Come in. We'll put our shoes <laughs> <laughs> this is a uh, Zainab and Rukaya. Just learning these little things here and there, I knew I was going to become a Muslim. It was it was inevitable to me that I was going to become a Muslim. But I think it was the waswas in my ear, just thinking, hold on, hold on. But what if? But what if? And it was just you know, it was the shaitan keeping me back. But Alhamdulillah, after everything, I put my scarf on when I went to the centre and I never took it off. I stayed wearing it for two weeks straight. Um, I had met people and they said, oh, well, mashallah, when did you become a Muslim? And I said, I'm not Muslim yet. And they're like, oh, mashallah, you're wearing your scarf. I'm like, I don't want to take it off. I didn't want to take it off. But um, no, Alhamdulillah, I, was, I remember I was with Sister Fatima at her house. She said, OK, so why aren't you Muslim yet? She said, you haven't taken your scarf off. You've stopped listening to music. You're doing everything. She goes, why aren't you Muslim? I'm like, oh, but what if, 
What is she's like, what do you mean, what if, what, what, what is it? And I said, well, nothing. There's nothing stopping me. She goes, okay, say this after me. She said, Ashadu la ilaha la la ilaha 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 I was born again, do you know what I mean? It was, it was amazing. I can't, even, I can't explain that what I felt in my heart. I felt like a big blanket had just been lifted off, off me and no, I, I could see. Thank you. Bye. I'm going to take my polar bitches. What is that? I'm going to take my polar bitches. Do you reckon it's your or? It's going to be, it's, it's Sunday afternoon. All the yellow ladies are going to be there. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Jump in. I'll see you. Tempe. Yeah. 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 We're going to go to the big park. You know the one with the big swing? Yeah, that one. Go see over there. And a huge slide yesterday with one that's my party? Yeah. That's a huge slide when it's my party. When I first, when it was finally finished and I, and I had a shower at Julia's house, I did the ghusul for becoming a Muslim and everything but when I first read the words I just felt like a whole building was lifted off my shoulders I just felt I felt like a baby I felt like I was born again because everything that I had learned it's like okay like it's a clean slate there's nothing on me right now and I don't want to make any mistakes do you know what I mean when I was driving I didn't want to speed because I didn't want to die because I wanted to learn so many more things and I wanted to like I wanted to I just wanted to learn so much. I felt like I had gone into a whole new world that I had learned about before, but now I was a part of it. I was truly a part of it. So they were, 100, like, they were truly my beliefs, and I just wanted to learn more, and I wanted to learn how to pray. I couldn't wait to fast. I couldn't wait to, you know, go scarves, get scarves, and do all these kind of things. Do you know what I mean? After I became Muslim, it was a day, the day of Eid, a fitra. I got a phone call. My dad said to me, I don't want you to come home. And till this day, I don't know how my dad found out. I don't want to bring it up. That night, um, I didn't go home. And I, it was a week when I finally got home that my cousin came to the lady's house that I was staying at. Um, and she was speaking to my father to try to calm him down. And... During the time when my dad didn't know, I was actually hiding the hijab. So what I'll do is I would um, not practice hijab at home because I was trying to hide it from my father. But if I wanted to go out anywhere, I'll get my friends to pick me up. I'll go to run to the car with a hood and then I'll wear my hijab. That became very difficult. It affected when I did become Muslim. The faith and the strength I had, I didn't know where I it came from because the day when I went to get my bags from my house when my dad wasn't there I was shocked um, my mum was crying and saying to me stay and I, I respected her but I still um, I, no matter what I would not disobey my, my God they noticed the change in me the respect I had for them the way I spoke to them changed because before I didn't um, I used to say things to them that I didn't mean, but when I became Muslim, definitely, definitely they noticed the change in, my, in the way um, I was, and my dad congratulated me on my faith. <laughs> Lucky we didn't go to class. I fully got it excited. Oh, what channel is this? Is? <laughs> Come on. I didn't bring your bike. Right. It's changed it again. Yes. Where the water shut off? There's a door. I know, Habibi. I promise next time I'll bring your bike.
Do they have a chance? Cookie doesn't want to. Does Zan have a chance? Yeah, got a chance. Oh. 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 Put your song on. Stay there, Zainab. Oh. 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 Your mind is the greatest teacher. Yeah. Your mind thinks of nothing but itself. You don't think of God. You don't think of things. So you believe you're free. So you believe you can do everything in the world is available to you. And to someone, a young mind, that's, that's their freedom. But as you mature, and especially becoming a Muslim, it's not that that freedom stops. It's that a whole other freedom opens. Like, especially in a scarf, people look at me and they believe that I'm trapped. I'm forced. You know, it's that around us, everyone sees, like people that are non-Muslim and don't understand, will see someone wearing a scarf and think, oh, the poor thing. I feel so sorry for her, you know? But they don't realize that this is freedom. This is the most freedom to me. This is freedom to protect myself, freedom to protect my, um, freedom to protect my modesty. And I believe I'm, I have freedom in a way I've never had before. And I've only realized that since I became a Muslim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 